we have talked quite a few times on this channel about the nature of evil and how it comes in deception. It doesn't always look like this, you know, horrible, monstrous type of thing. Although it could, it could. And think of death metal bands and their artwork and stuff. I always find it so strange when fathers are taking their kids to the school bus and they're wearing these t-shirts with, you know, Metallica and you know, all these different death metal bands and there's death and all this weird stuff represented on the t-shirts. And I always just sit back and think, wow, that is the reality map that you are putting in your kid's brain for setting that which is good and that which is evil. And we, as a society, become a walking billboard to whatever it is that we put on our bodies and that is one of the ways that we are manipulated through these PR campaigns of supporting these things that are not good. That's just one of the ways. But those things are more easy to spot and point your finger out and go, that's wicked, that's weird, that's full of schools or death or demons or whatever. That's one way that Satan uses evil. But the more subtle, the more deceptive, I think the more clever, because Satan is a very clever entity, Lucifer, is oftentimes he will come very beautiful. He'll come wrapped up with some type of very spiritual, glorious, wonderful, you know, plug plug in the need for whatever your spiritual emptiness of all human beings have this hole in their soul. Uh, in their in their body temple, rather, with their soul, where their spirit man is dead. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. And Ecclesiastes says that that man has this eternity put inside of him. And Augustine and others have noted that, you know, some people just, they never feel complete. There's always something amiss and wrong. And quite simply, it is that the Holy Spirit is not on the inside of you until you repent and become born again and come to him. And so in, in the pursuit of Satan having all these counterfeit things that he does, he uses things that seemingly by appearance only are very deceptive. And I, and I just, I really feel sometimes like Christians are way too innocent, way, way, way too trusting of things around them and not just Christians, certainly unbelievers as well. And I'm, I'm listening to Leland and I'm over here at his channel and I'm kind of drinking this in bit by bit. And he's now going to be talking about how he had this conversation with someone and how there is this real marriage between in this person's mind and what he sees forming. He's going to show you here in a little bit between Kabbalah, these Eastern meditation, Eastern chakra, very Hindi centric type of, you know, energy centers, energy fields, you know, taking God and, and, and changing him from a personal entity, a personal being to a force that you can manipulate with witchcraft and rebellion and whatnot, and marrying that together with Judaism. And so he was showing this very strange, almost like tourism oriented type of place that you could go to where, you know, people could go and they could see this seven emanations, these, these almost chakra like things where you, it's another path. It's a broad path to get to the God of this world. And so let's listen to what he has to say. In Eastern religion. And it is basically a, they, they pervert the tree of life into various points. I think there's 10 points, but the chakra has seven. Now, the reason I'm explaining all this is that I'm sitting outside of the tomb of David talking with someone that is in favor of chakra. Okay, in the course of conversation, this person is telling me that these things are good, that these chakras, these Eastern religion, is he's taking this East, Eastern religion concept and combining it with Judaism. And he's saying those are the, those seven divine emanations are actually the menorah. Well, now, this is just horrible. And I know for the majority of you listening to this, this is, of course, very strange. But it gets worse. So as I'm talking to this person, they then 
begin to explain to me that they've been doing um, lamb sacrifices for five years. Okay, and in the course of explaining this to me, they they basically said that they would they would pray until the spirit of Yeshua entered that sheep. Okay, <laughs> what? And there was someone else there that is, that recorded a this confrontation I had with this person. Okay, I, I hope that footage they'll share it because you can you can see you know I was appalled by this but this person is basically telling me that they're conjuring a spirit into a live sheep that they're about to kill wow and you know I that's not to say there isn't some spirit but it's not Yeshua Hamashiach it's not Yehoshua it's not Jesus Christ okay he's not going into the sheep for you to this is horrible abominations <laughs> and I know all of you agree with this so this person is telling me this, right, and, and is also preparing to go to the same conference, this conference. They're preparing to go. So I'm like, look, this is, this is just horrible things. You're speaking to me. Do not, you know, we are not going together to this conference. We are not cool, okay? This is not good. Well, of course, this person comes. Not only, guys, do they come, he was the one that did the sacrifice. Now, I'm... Oh, wait a minute. What what did he just say? He just said that's who did the sacrifice. Okay, you have to understand, I have been trying with all of my might, we'll get to you in a little bit, to try to upload a video that has been blocked over and over and over again, precisely dealing with the subject matter of this entity who Adam Berkowitz from BreakingIsraelNews.com did an article on his experience. What it is is a hit piece is what it is. So one way or another, I'm going to find a way to upload this video. I just had to kind of come away from it for a little bit. But now Leland is telling me that he has now encountered this entity who, strangely enough, was the person that was conjuring a spirit and was pro-Kabbalah and Judaism mixed together. And he was the one that sliced this lamb's throat that they gave as a, a burnt sacrifice, which Adam Berkowitz is very careful to, you know, say over and over and over again that Christians are hateful. Christians are hateful. I mean, that was the most used word in repetition that was given over and over again. Hate, hate, hate. Attaching it to Christians and then trying to, in an analysis of his article, which was basically, you know, things didn't go exactly the way we wanted, or at least that's what they tell us. See, that's why I'm always suspect of the narrative that's being given. I don't just automatically trust. Some people out there might do that. I don't do that. I don't hero worship. I don't do that. But anyhow, he is saying that he became best friends with this person in a day. Don't you know? Adam Berkowitz. And I have already done some videos talking a little bit and giving this article, but I do want to here. So you know what I'm talking about. Let's just go down. It's called The 70 Nations Sacrifice on the Mount of Olives, a personal account written on the 27th yesterday, in which he goes over and he basically tells you, look, this was not a sacrifice to do some kind of evil. You Christians are all wrong. It was a burnt sacrifice. Splitting hairs, it was a sacrifice that was that to Yahweh under what the Bible says that you're even allowed to do, which is when Jesus is done, he's done. There's no more sacrifice. But, um, you know, he rejects Jesus in the article, which is completely fine if that's what he wants to do. If he wants to go pay for his own sins, that is fine. He is allowed to do that. What he's not allowed to do and abscond away with is this hit piece. The sacrifice was explicitly not a sin offering. It was a burnt offering, just like Noah. We're doing the same thing that Noah was. It was certainly not intended as a declaration against any belief in Jesus or any other religious belief. Yes, yes, it was. The Bible describes the covenant. No, it doesn't. The Talmud does. 
and is between God and all of mankind. No, it's not. Uh, and then again, the pushing of the seven Noahide laws, you always got to have that in there. Of course, he never says a thing to you about the sub laws, which are the Judy Nisi meaty pieces that uh, tell you that if you don't obey them and you don't uh, go into those with your oath, that your head gets cut off. And then he says here, this is annoying. They are clearly not part of a nefarious plan for Jews to control Christians. Many Christians believe that there is a prophecy that one day two branches will be grafted in as one. I do not want to be grafted in with a person who does not follow these laws. Well, guess what? You don't follow them because you have murder in your heart when you sit there and you say over and over and over again that Christians are hateful. Christians are hateful. Christians are hateful. Merely because we disagree with your platform. We disagree with this abusive propaganda power that you're using with your pen to sway the masses, to malign Christians, and to say that we're doing something wrong by not being on board with you. And he brings up Rambam, so some Jewish dude from a bajillion years ago that nobody cares what he has to say because he's not an authorized apostle. And he... Let's see if I can find it here for you where he just falls head over heels for this guy that completely creeped out Leland Jones. Let me see if I can find it for you. Here we go. The sacrifice experience and disclaimer. Um, the person who performed the sacrifice was a last minute unexpected replacement who's into witchcraft, by the way, according to Leland who uh, was racked with awe. I prefer not to name him at this point because I have known him for one day, one whole day, yo. And he is already one of my dearest friends and one of the sweetest men I have ever met. I know that from one day. Uh, Hebrew says, lay hands on no man suddenly. As anticipated, much of the reaction to this event has been hatred, just hatred. <laughs> And I would not want my dear friend to be targeted by people who hate one of God's commands or the Noahide covenant. Doesn't he sound just so sanctimonious? He says up here while he's manipulating you that um, the Mashiach is in the advanced stages and we are content with reaping the material benefits of Mashiach. Well, tis tis not rec recognizing our obligation to move forward. Naughty, naughty. And then. Down here, he will go into this diatribe about Christians. Christians hate this. Christians hate that. It's your sin if you don't like this. On and on and on and on. He says Judaism has never done Christianity any harm. And this act harmed no one except one small lamb. Okay, but what are they doing now? See, when you know the sub laws, you know that they are plotting your destruction. For realsies. They say it in their own website, noahide.com. Um, he's saying that God is just trying to take hatred out of the world. Hatred's already the cost has cost the Jews one temple. And I pray it will not cost us another. The manipulation is outrageous. They got their temple taken away because they denied their Messiah. Okay. And that's just, that's just historical data on that. That's, there is something wrong with these people when they deny historical information because they're in the land of denial. And anybody else that tries to come along with historical information as a basis for reality, friends, they say, well, you're hateful. No, I actually love the truth. Do you? And then he puts it all on us that it's a sin. We have sinned. So kind of strange. And now Leland is saying that the dude that cut this lamb's throat was weird, 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 weird. I think I got out of that. <laughs> so he's telling you that the original guy that was going to cut the lamb's throat and, and offer him up as a burnt sacrifice begged out and said, I'm not participating for whatever reason. Maybe the fear of God just entered him, right? Don't know. And so he's now explaining that this other guy that he just met, they talked to that's into this practice of Kabbalah and witchcraft, which is already something that's being resent, represented at the center there. Do you see it in the thumbnail? These seven emanations, this Kabbalah witchcraft is the guy that's like, okay, I'm ready to go because the Sanhedrin is asking him. 
would you like to help? <laughs> There's just such a big bag of crazy going on with this stuff. It, it, it just becomes painful. 